These are the facts. Arthur Vubus, professor of theology at the University of Tartu in Estonia, has this to say about communism. No one is able to describe the infernal work of the communists to whom victims are delivered. Waves of arrests follow one another. Everyone is guilty and liable to persecution. Nobody is safe from the midnight knock at the door, which means arrest, torture, deportation, and death. If a car is heard to stop in front of the house at night, a cold and implacable fear falls upon all within. Crimes against humanity and limitless savagery bring the people to despair. Worker, peasant, intellectuals, even women, children, and babies are arrested, tortured, murdered. Tens of thousands are killed with no court of justice. The president of our state, ministers of our government, prominent leaders of cultural life, pastors of the church, leaders of science and education go the way of martyrdom. 62,769 Estonians, men, women, children, and infants follow the same path of despair, blood, and death. Communism began in 1903 under Nikolai Lenin with 17 supporters. In 1917, with only 40,000 followers, it overthrew the democratic Kerensky regime and began its tyrannical rule over Russia. Today, less than 50 years later, this monstrous system rules over one billion people, five times the population of the United States. 42 million communists in 90 communist parties control absolutely 40% of the world's population, and the number grows hourly. Communists enslave 60,000 people every day, 365 days out of the year, and they have done so for 46 years. Communists have murdered 70 million people. Dr. Tom Dooley described communism as he witnessed it in Laos. One midnight, shortly before Christmas, he was awakened by two young boys. They took him to a hut where a kerosene lamp was burning. There he found several kneeling figures chanting their prayers, and on a straw mattress a man, his face twisted in agony, his lips moving in silent prayer. When Dr. Dooley pulled back the blanket, he found the man's body a mass of blackened flesh from shoulders to knees. It was the most grisly sight this doctor had ever seen. The man was a Catholic priest who had made the mistake of preaching the gospel. He had been systematically tortured by communists in his home village, a torture that consisted of hanging him upside down by the feet from a ceiling beam and then beating him for hours upon the most sensitive parts of his anatomy with bamboo rods. In Tibet, as red criminals overran the nation and the United Nations stood idly by and watched, the terror was immense. In one monastery, a monk protested when red soldiers used his sacred scriptures for toilet paper. They cut his arm off at the elbow and told him his god would grow another. 300,000 monks were either worked to death or shot. The temples were profaned, the people put into slavery. Communism is not a political system. It is a criminal conspiracy on a scale the world has never before seen. It is, in fact, antichrist in action. Communism is first a system of atheism. There is no God, they say, so they make themselves to be God and set up their own moral system. They become a law unto themselves. Having rejected God, communists also reject the concept of man's spiritual nature. Man, they say, is nothing but matter in motion. Man is an accident of nature. Man, according to Karl Marx, founder of modern communism, has no soul. He should be treated accordingly. Man is no more than a fly or a flea and can be as easily disposed of. Dedicated communists refer to the slaughtered millions as last year's fallen leaves and think no more of them. 
The House Committee on Un-American Activities revealed that in Red China, all people over the age of 60 who can no longer work are put into a place they call the happy home. Here they are given injections, supposedly for their health. Within two weeks, they die, and the corpses are then put into vats where they decay and are consumed by maggots. When the maggots are large enough, they are fed to chickens, and the rest of the body is used for fertilizer. Because of this, the people of Hong Kong will no longer eat chickens imported from the mainland of China. Man, say the communists, has no soul and therefore he is just another animal. He can look forward to nothing but oblivion at death. All this is what communists mean by materialism. The end, they say, justifies whatever means are used to bring it about. Communists refer to their system as dialectical materialism. We have already explained what they mean by materialism. The word dialectical simply means conflict or struggle. Marx believed that materialism grows by contradictions. In other words, matter develops into new and improved things after struggling with other matter for a long time. Those who own property, said Marx, are contradicted by those who do not own property. Therefore, there is conflict between these two classes, the landowners and those without land. Out of this conflict comes a new social and economic order in which all property belongs to the state. Revolution, say the communists, is a fine thing, for out of this will come greater social change. In their concept of the end justifying whatever means are used, Marx and his alter ego Lenin came up with the most diabolical scheme of all. Whatever advances communism, they said, is good. Whatever does not advance communism is bad. Therefore, it is necessary to lie, cheat, steal, torture, break promises, and destroy entire nations in order to bring communism about. This, they say, is good. The communist mind, says Herbert Philbrick, former counter-spy for the FBI, is a criminal mind. He is the essence of pure evil. One communist can be as dangerous as a whole division of the Red Army. No wonder it is said that Joseph Stalin murdered his own mother when she raised doubts about his early ties to communism. What this tyranny would be like after the defeat of all powers now working against it when it could freely work its will, we cannot begin to comprehend in all its bestiality. It differs from any form of tyranny in the past because it possesses completeness. It completely monopolizes all means of forming a man. Communism has the complete propaganda apparatus at its disposal, from the kindergarten to the university, from the cradle to the grave. It controls everything, newspapers, radio, television, motion pictures, the theater. It has conceived psychological techniques for reforming the mind and soul of man. It is able to neutralize and destroy, with little real opposition, everything that keeps it from advancing implacably toward its goal. The man communism creates is a human being that is minus all that is human, a man without freedom of thought or originality. This robot, this collective being, has no heart, no feeling, no conscience. This is, in fact, the perfect robot of the communist state. Done away with is every trace of Christianity. Done away with are all means by which Christianity is spread and can remain in existence on the earth. Done away with is all religion, all churches, all Bibles, all humanistic literature and art. All these things, they say, are dangerous. They must be destroyed in time. All memory of human history must be destroyed unless it serves to enforce the communist state and to glorify communism.
All these things are not accomplished as yet, but they surely will be when communism no longer has to worry about world opinion, when communists can run roughshod across the earth. There is no hope for a people thoroughly communized or to hope for any revolution from a nation so brainwashed. To hope for internal revolution is but a dream. It cannot ever be reality. We in the West still live in a world where we think for ourselves. Expressing our ideas is accepted as a matter of course. We are completely incapable of even imagining a generation so totally inhuman. For this reason, the people of the West allow themselves the incredible luxury of defaming anti-communism as an unchristian attitude. The people of the free world must soon awaken from this madness of fighting those who fight the communists. The people of the free world must rise up to protect mankind from this ghastly end, which will do away with all the fruits of all the history of man. Communism is the implacable foe of God, of religion, and of any form of human decency or morality. Communism is man turned into an animal. Communism is man degenerated into a soulless robot of the communist state. These are the facts.